Hi, I'm Kevin Lopez. I'm with the Azure Stack Global Black Belt team, and I'm joined here today by my colleague. Hi, Dwayne Hall, Azure Stack Global Black Belt for the Northeast U.S. So, Dwayne, thanks for joining us today. Um, we kind of talked about in some of the other sessions how Azure Stack is an extension of Azure, and so we kind of got that you know, down pat. Tell us what operators need to think about, because I know today you wanted to talk about kind of operators and what their offers look like, what the plans and quotas look like. Can you give us a, an idea of what an operator would face when they're looking at that stuff? Yeah, it's going to be a little different than Azure, because in Azure, we, Microsoft manages everything for you. In uh -huh. Azure Stack, there's a, you know, a little bit of that onus goes on to the, um, to the customer. So okay. let's take a look at uh, how that goes. Thanks. All right, jump into it. So Azure Stack, as we know, is an extension of Azure. Um, it's Azure services in your data center. Um, we like to keep them truly consistent uh, across the two platforms. However, there will be some differences uh, when it comes to the, the way that you operate and you manage Azure Stack. With Azure Stack in your data, you know, if we start at the top with Azure, um, on the left-hand side, we, we have users. You know, this is our... Um, in Azure, you get a subscription, you log into the subscription, and you can start consuming services. Okay. You don't really have to think about where those services are coming from. Microsoft is managing all of that for you in the background. Um, you know, we have engineers that that is, you know, how we deliver those services. In Azure Stack, it's a similar model in the sense that you still have users, you have tenants and the tenants need access to uh, the services in Azure Stack. <clears throat> However, in this case, th it's the owner of the Azure Stack, whether it be a service uh, delivery partner or whether it's uh, an enterprise, they're the ones who manage the back-end uh, services to Azure Stack. Ah, so you have cool. Azure Stack operators that yeah. need to go in and set up the services, the quotas, um, and make those available to the users. So if I'm a customer, I'm doing that for my internal users, and if I'm a, a managed service provider, then I'm doing that for my customers. Absolutely. Okay, okay, yeah. all right, thanks. Um, so again, the problem is, how do I manage access to resources? Um, in Azure, it's through subscriptions and offers. In Azure Stack, it's, it's similar. It's through subscription offers. The difference is, you have to manage what those subscriptions are and what the offers are. Um, there's a finite amount of resources, so you have to control or you want to keep a handle on what resources are being consumed on the stack. Okay. Um, and that's whether you're a service provider or just an enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take a, uh, you know, I used all my PowerPoint skills here to, <laughs> to, to build this one out. Let's just take a quick look a at, at what this looks like. I like to start with services themselves. So services in Azure Stack today, you have compute storage, network, SQL, and app services are mm -hmm. the, the main um, resources and services that we can set up there. Uh, for each of those, you can go in and set up quotas. So how, how much uh, quota do you want to allow a certain group of users to consume for compute or uh, for storage? Um, so once you've gone in and you've created uh, your, your quotas for the specific resources, then you can go out and you can build out offers and plans. So an offer essentially consists of, uh, is a way to give users access to resources. So you create an offer, you give that offer to a, you, to a subscription, which contains people. Those offers contain plans, and the plans themselves contain one or more resources with the associated uh, quotas uh, for them. Got it, got it. So, so you want to start with services, kind of define the things within those, and then work your way back uh, up the chain almost uh, for plans and then offers. Yes, and actually, and we'll take a look at this. In the interface, you can start with offers and it will walk you through creating all of these. Okay. Um, you know, but you want to have your services and quotas in place first. So right. let's, uh, let's get, uh, you know, out of this model and go look at how it really works. Okay, you're going to show us. I'm going to show you. Excellent. It looks just like this. 
Okay, so this is my Azure Stack Administrator console. So in Azure Stack, um, there are two consoles. There are the Administrator console, and then there's the Tenant Portal. Okay. So uh, as you know, today I'm the Azure Stack Operator. I'm going into the Administrator console, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how you would uh, set up compute um, a, an offer for IS compute, let's say. So in the portal here, if I come in and I want to look at my resources, I can look at the services that I have set up here. And if I look at my compute service, you can see I have a compute service and I can look at what quotas I have for that compute service. And I've gone in and I've set up, it, there was a default quota that was set up for me uh, when I created the service. Um, or when the service was installed um, during the Azure Stack installation because Compute is one of the um, base services that come with Azure Stack. Okay. Um, and then I went in and I, wanna s I set up a standard Compute quota. So if I look at my standard Compute quota, you can see what it, it exists of. There's 50 virtual machines. Uh, this, uh, this quota will allow someone to create 50 virtual machines, 100 uh, VM cores with a max availability sets of 10 and the max number of virtual machine scale sets of 100. Ah. Um, so that's the, you know, any of those maximums are met, the, uh, that tenant will no longer to be, be able to create new resources. They'll have to come back and either get an add-on plan or clean up some of their environment or, you know, get an additional plan for the services. And so the administrator, the operator, is going to be monitoring a lot of this stuff. Absolutely. To kind of keep track of everything, talking to people, letting them know. So they're, yeah, th th they can monitor tenant usage. They'll most likely be most concerned with the overall usage of the stack itself mm -hmm. and, and how much uh, resources are being consumed there. Okay. Um, good question, though. All right, so if I go look at my offers, in my environment, I've set up two offers. I have a dev offer that's been set up for my DevOps people. This will give them access to uh, app services in Azure Stack. Then I have an IaaS standard offering. Um, so we'll look at this IaaS standard offering. If I drill into it, um, and even before I do that, if I wanted to create a new offer, I could just simply add an offer, I would give it a name, and the, uh, assign it a plan. So okay. in this case, I've, uh, create, I already have these two plans created. If I was creating something net new and it didn't have a sure. plan already out there, I could go in and add a plan. But like any good baking show, we're gonna walk through one <laughs> I've created already. Something that's already baked. Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. Okay, so we'll go back to my standard off, or my IS standard. Um, I have a base plan associated with this. And if I look at my base plan, big surprise, it's I, my IS standard. All right. Okay, so if I look at my IS standard plan, you'll see the services and quotas that are associated with this are compute, network, and storage. So to create a virtual machine inside of Azure Stack, you're going to need to be able to have compute, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to have uh, storage for the virtual machine disk, and the network associated with it. So this uh, particular plan gives you the ability to create all three of those. Each one of these I've already associated to my um, standard serve or quota that, that I showed you earlier right. in, under right. the compute resource. Okay. So I have these three. So if I back out to my offer and look at it again, I have my standard IaaS offer. Um, I want to take a look at what subscriptions are uh, part of this. So I can add a subscription here and give um, other users the ability to uh, access these resources that I've set up. However, I've already set up a subscription here. I gave it a really creative name of IS Standard. <laughs> um, and I've assigned it to my John O. Uh, account that I have. This could be a group, uh, could be multiple users, but okay. in this case, it's just my old manager, Johnny John, O. Yeah, Johnny Orcus. Okay, um, so I've assigned that. This is all in my admin portal. Now we'll switch uh, personas and we'll, we'll go over and we'll become John. So I'm going to switch to a tenant portal. Okay. Uh, you and can how see. Do I, how do I know that this is the tenant portal? I just want to recap. Because it's blue. 
Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because I, in the tenant portal, you will not see uh, any of the offers That's what I was looking or, or any yeah. of the services that it takes to administrator right. um, Azure Stack. You will only see the components that you have access to and really the things that you, the services you're going to consume. Okay. So this, uh, the, the Azure Stack uh, tenant portal looks a little more like the straight Azure portal. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of the underlying management pieces. Right, right. Okay. So I'm logged in as John. Uh, if we would have, you know, I didn't show you. I'll show you real quick. In the admin portal, I was logged in as Dwayne. So I was logged in there as myself go. creating all this. Now I'm going to go in. I'm going to be a consumer of these services. So I've logged in as John. Um, if I go and look at what subscriptions I have, you can see I have an IS standard subscription. Mm -hmm. So that was the one that we just looked at, right. which gave me the ability to, you know, it should show. I, I do have virtual machines here, but I won't take the shortcut. I'll say, okay, under compute, I do have virtual machines. I also could go in and just create storage or some networks because I gave myself the ability to do any of that. Right, those. as you pointed out earlier. Yeah, so here's my virtual machine. If I go in, I can add a virtual machine in here. And it gives me a list of my virtual machines from my gallery. So if you watched Alton's um, introduction to the portal on how we can um, syndicate the Azure Stack portal with the Azure portal and pull um, different um, compute down, I mean, in this case, an image of SQL Server 2014 or a SUSE image, mm -hmm. uh, I've pulled these from the Azure portal. Um, already, and if I wanted to go in and deploy one, I would simply go in and click create. Okay. And then walk through creating uh, a machine here the same way that, that Alton did earlier. Okay. I won't, you know, walk you through the, but if we go into Azure, this is the same experience. Okay. So, you know, you'll also notice in here, I don't have access to SQL Server or App Services or any other services, only the ones that I've been given access to as the John O user. Wonderful. Yeah. So the other session you were referencing is sort of that out of box uh, beginning the setup that Alton did on the other video that we did. Okay, so this gets us through, uh, you know, what do we need to consider? Right, so, so if you're the administrator and you're the operator, you're going to go in, you're going to create your office plans quotas, get it out for the people, for your consumers to consume and use it. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, well, what I'll say in closing is um, I see, I've seen a lot of customers tend to say, oh, yeah, I'll take care of that later. You know, once I get Azure, once I get rolling, I'll, I'll create a plan for how I'm going to manage this. Yeah. I would stress that it's important to do it up front because it, it gets you thinking in the right mindset around what resources do I have, how do I want to allocate them, and you know, what services do I want to offer to, to my tenants, whether it be my DevOps group, a, you know, um, if you're an, um, or my SQL group, or wh whatever group it may be, it, it allows you to do the planning up front and be organized on how you manage your Azure Stack environment. That's a great best practice. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. Okay, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, we'll see you at the next video. Have a good day.